Good morning, and welcome to the virtual worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown, where we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person, and where we support each other in our spiritual search for truth and meaning. My name is Reverend Kate Wilkinson, and I am so glad that you have joined us this week. A special welcome to those tuning in from the UU Meeting House in Chatham. We're so glad that you are here. This morning, we are drawing on the style and traditions of Tizé. The Tizé style of worship involves short readings, repetitious chanting, silence, and often the lighting of candles. It comes from a specific Christian community in France. Sometimes when Unitarian Universalists draw on different traditions, we take what we like and adapt it without truly honoring the deep and specific practices that we are borrowing. So today, before we begin our Tizé style worship, we will learn a little bit more about its origins. But first, as I light our chalice here at the Meeting House, I invite you to light a candle wherever you are. In that way, we can feel together even while we are apart. Let us worship with our eyes and ears and fingertips. Let us love the world through heart, mind, and body. We feed our eyes upon the mystery of revelation in the faces of our brothers and sisters. We seek to know the wistfulness of the very young and the very old, the wistfulness of people in all times of life. We seek to understand the shyness behind arrogance, the fear behind pride, the tenderness behind clumsy strength, the anguish behind cruelty. All life flows in a great common life if we will only open our eyes to our companions. Let us worship not in bowing down, not with closed eyes and stopped ears. Let us worship with the opening of all the windows of our beings, with the full outstretching of our spirit. Life comes with singing and laughter, with tears and confiding, with a rising wave too great to be held in the mind and heart and body to those who have fallen in love with life. Let us worship and let us learn to love. The Tizé community is a beautiful spiritual sanctuary for people all around the world but it was born out of one of history's darkest chapters, and its founder met a tragic ending. This is his story. Brother Roger was born in 1915 in Switzerland. He had a French mother, and his Swiss father was a Protestant pastor. Growing up, he often heard his grandmother's stories of helping refugees during the First World War. And that inspired him to want to reach out to the poor and oppressed. He felt called to the monastic life. As war broke out again, he left Switzerland and in 1940 traveled through German-occupied France stopping in the tiny village of Tizé, where an old woman offered him a meal and encouraged him to stay. 
He raised money to buy an abandoned house and outbuildings where he began to offer shelter to those in need. Word spread quickly that the community was a safe haven and he began to take in more and more refugees. There were some Christians, but many of the people sheltered within Brother Roger's walls were Jews, atheists, and others in great danger from the Nazis. Because so many of the refugees were of varying faiths, or none at all, Roger encouraged silent prayer. After many children arrived at the Tizé community, Roger enlisted his sister, Genevieve, to help him care for them. This continued until 1942, when Roger and Genevieve were warned that their activities had been discovered by the Gestapo. They were forced to flee to Switzerland, but returned to Tizé two years later and refounded the monastic community that still exists today, made up of both Protestants and Catholics. After the war, Brother Roger and the other monks no longer needed to offer protection, but soon young people began arriving in the small village, seeking a place of healing and peace. Today, Tizé is one of the world's most important sites of Christian pilgrimage. Each year, tens of thousands of young people flock there to share in the community's way of life. They camp in the fields around the church and monastery, joining in the community's worship three times a day and meeting people from all over the world. Prayer and silence are at the heart of the Tizé experience, as well as short hymns sung over and over in various languages. Because the building is too small to accommodate such numbers, the church's walls can be opened so that those sitting outside can participate. During the height of the pilgrimage season, Tizé is like a united nations of languages, nationalities, and cultures. But even though people come from many different backgrounds, there's an incredible sense of unity and love that is formed there through worship and the discussion groups that take place each morning. Travel writer Lori Erickson once wrote, I must admit that my first reaction to Tizé was disappointment. The weather was cold and bleak, and unlike many of the religious sites I've visited over the years, Tizé isn't particularly scenic or beautiful. Instead, it's made up of a collection of utilitarian buildings surrounded a no-frills church. but. By the time we left the next morning, I realized that my initial reaction to Tizé was wrong. For even after only a brief visit there, I came away convinced that this was one of the most significant pilgrimage sites I've ever visited. In 2005, Brother Roger, leading a Tizé service at the age of 90, was killed by a mentally disturbed woman. While Brother Roger's death was a terrible tragedy, the community responded from their deeply held values of peacemaking and reconciliation. They rallied around the woman and her family and forgave her for what she had done. Brother Roger was buried outside the village's small stone church, and his grave is marked with a simple wooden cross. Once, when Pope John Paul II visited the Tizé community, he said to the gathered crowd, 
One passes through Taze as one passes close to a spring of water. The traveler stops, quenches his thirst, and continues on his way. May this worship service be to you as a spring of water, quenching your thirst and fortifying you for the journey ahead as we step into a new year. I invite you now to imagine that you are stepping into that sacred space of the Tize community. Not a cathedral, but a tent with open sides, widening itself to include everyone who finds their way there, widening itself to include you. It is evening and the candles are lit. You find yourself being lured in by the music. It is not in your language, it is in Latin, but somehow you can feel the meaning. Ubi caritas et amor, Deus ibi est. Where charity and love are, there God is. Shared Silence by Gunilla Norris Within each of us there is a silence, a silence as vast as the universe. When we experience that silence, we remember who we are, 
creatures of the stars, created from time and space, created from silence. Silence is our deepest nature, our home, our common ground, our peace. Silence is where God dwells. We yearn to be there. The experience of silence is now so rare that we must guard it and treasure it. This is especially true of shared silence. I invite you into a moment of shared silence now. A Moment of Silence, Winter Morning by James Cruz. When I can no longer say thank you for this new day and the waking into it, for the cold scrape of the kitchen chair and the ticking of the space heater glowing orange as it warms the floor near my feet. I know it's because I've been fooled again by the selfish, unruly man who lives in me and believes he deserves only safety and comfort. But if I pause as I do now and watch the streetlights outside flashing off 
one by one, like old men blinking their cloudy eyes. If I listen to my tired neighbors slamming car doors hard against the morning and see the steaming coffee in their mugs, kissing <coughs> chapped lips as they sip <coughs> and exhale each of their worries white into the icy air around their faces. Then I can remember this one life is a gift each of us was handed and told to open. Untie the bow and tear off the paper. Look inside and be grateful for whatever you find, even if it is only the scent of a tangerine that lingers on your fingers long after you've finished peeling it. God, grant me the peace of winter. The birds are going or gone. The confetti the trees use to greet the wind has been gathered in. The fields hug their sorrows close under white blankets. This is a silence worth hearing. A peace deeper than naming that attends, that settles in and sits by the soul. Chuckling at the antics of those mad siblings to and fro, watching them grow into here and now. God, the peace of winter to me and to those I love. Each field, each branch, each speck of mud, a testament larger than death itself to the eternal coming and being of things. Still 
Oh